actually about vaccination and its issues. Uh, okay, siapa kena remove tu? How to present my entire screen? Allow not this one. Right. Slides. Oh. Okay. Nampak? Boleh nampak slide? Uh, boleh tak? Boleh nampak tak? Boleh boleh. Nampak boleh nampak. nampak. Okay. Semua, semua buka. Yes, buka kahut ni. Kahut.it. Kahut.it. Let's start. Boleh tak? Okay, alright. Banyak pula proses dia. Okay. Ready to join? Uh, let's see mana nombor dia ni. Slow lah pula. Semua dah ada, semua dah on kahut dah? Ah, okay, this is the number. Okay. Nampak? Nampak ke tak nampak? Uh, nampak doktor. Nampak, nampak. So how, how many of you? 140. Dah, cukup. Okay, okay. Berapa ramai? Berapa ramai? Firstly, 140. Baik, Karen, Karen punya partisipan 128. Sekali dengan doktor. Oh, ya. Ada yang mengaku handsome tu. Nampau tu. So we'll wait a bit, dah ramai sikit join, baru kita, baru kita start eh. Ninety-eight. Mana lagi ni? Okay lah, bila kita start je lah eh. Nanti join lah. Oh dah, okay, okay, wait. Let's wait a bit more. Asudo. Chicken dinner, how do I? Okay lah, boleh start lah eh. Okay, let us start. Ten questions. Yeah. Apa je kacang ni soalan-soalan ni These vaccines are given orally. Which vaccine is given orally? Ah, so rotavirus vaccine is given orally eh, not, ah, ada yang jawab apa ni? Ada jawab tetanus, ada yang jawab meninggu, meninggu kokel obviously, meninggu kokel ni yang pergi haji tu, meninggu kokel is not given uh, uh, oral lah, it's given uh, uh, I am, I am. Uh, tetanus ni, uh, tetanus tak sort eh, uh, kalau kita ada luka, tercucuk paku apa semua kan, kan kita bagi tetanus ATT kan. So it is given I am as well lah. So rotavirus is the one that is given orally. Oh, Dr. Syed juga, power sekali. Not me eh tu. 
Okay, alright. Question number two. BCG is administered via apa? Through apa? Oral, cutaneous, intradermal, intramuscular. Okay, so majority got it right. Uh, some still, okay, so it's intradermal eh, dia bukannya subcut, dia bukannya intramuscular. Okay, alright. Number three, live vaccine. Live vaccine, ni soalan favorite untuk MCQ. Which one is live vaccine? The measles? Is it injectable polio? Is it oral polio? Is it BCG? Which one is live vaccine? Huh? So injectable polio is not live vaccine. Okay. Okay. Tukar-tukar orang semua bagus. Okay. Number four, absolute contraindication for any vaccination. What is absolute contraindication? I oh, spelling error. Acute febrile illness, following high dose steroid, following IV immunoglobulin, severe and emphasis to previous dose. You can select more than one. So only severe and emphasis to previous dose lah. It's a Absolute contraindication. Following IV immunoglobulin, kita boleh bagi lagi uh, certain types of vaccine. Uh, live vaccine yang kita tak boleh bagi. Ya. Uh, following IV immunoglobulin, following hydrosteroid, live vaccine yang kita tak boleh bagi. Itu pun kita boleh bagi, dia ada tengok based on the dose of the immunoglobulin and steroid. Kita boleh bagi sometime after 6 months, sometime after 12 months. Tengok macam mana. Tapi severe anaphylaxis to previous dose, this is an absolute contraindication to any type of vaccination. Okay, alright. Kasturi dengan tikas masih cemerlang lagi. I hope both of them are from pediatric uh, uh, first team. Lagi, okay, absolute contraindication for live vaccine. Okay, so low dose systemic steroid is not the contraindication lah eh. So immunosuppressed children, chemotherapy, immunoglobulin, these are all other absolute contraindication for live vaccine eh. Tadi tu about vaccination je. Okay, so kasturi, alright. So baru nombor enam, regarding timorosal. Ha, ni kalau siapa yang selalu baca website-website yang ada kaitan dengan anti-vaksin ni tahu ni isu tentang timorosal ni. Eh. Does it cause autism? <coughs> Uish, ada yang jawab causes autism in children. Oh, yo. This is basically uh, timorosal is, is an ethyl mercury. So it is a type of mercury. It's an ethyl mercury. So kalau you baca artikel-artikel uh, anti-vaccine, dia akan kata timorosal is the is the thing that causes uh, Causes, vac causes autism. Basically, this is not true lah. This is not not true. Because satunya yang orang kata kan, yang, yang artikel asal tu, dia kata what causes autism is actually uh, MMR vaccination. So, the, the thing is, for the past 10 years, for the past 10 years, MMR vaccine, tak ada timorosal dah pun. There's no more timorosal in the in the uh, MMR vaccine. So, it doesn't cause. And study exception, it is safe. And timorosal content in vaccine is much lower as compared to breast milk is even lower than the content in an apple. Maksudnya dalam apple pun ada timorosal, ada mercury juga. Hmm. Of course, it doesn't cause encephalitis lah. Okay, so hilang dah kasturi dengan tikas. Okay, alright, number seven. Sikit lagi. Very cellar zoster. <coughs> Very mild disease. May result encephalitis. Not preventable by vaccine. Uh, mesti ada very cellar party. So 
obviously it is not a mild disease. Uh. I've seen, we've seen uh, congenital varicella, we've seen varicella causing encephalitis actually for the past one year. No, for the past, since since beginning of 2020, we in UIA, in our own hospital, we have seen at least two varicella encephalitis in UIA itself. We've seen at least two varicella encephalitis. So varicella, chicken pox ni, uh, is uh, actually it can cause it, it is not just a mild disease in in units in newborn in newborn and also in children with immunosupp uh, they are immunosuppressed children who are on high dose steroid children who are on chemotherapy mortality rate due to varicella zoster is 30 percent one of my patient uh dia ada as far as i can remember budak tu ada uh, ALL ada acute lymphoblastic leukemia uh, this was a very good girl. Dia, I think umur dia 9 tahun macam tu masa dia dapat uh, leukemia. She was the one yang solat tak tinggal dekat 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 ward. She died because of very cellular zoster. She died because of chicken pox. It was very sad. So and then kita ada vaksin lah eh. Uh, very cellular ada vaksin dia. Very vax yang kita bagi after 12 month old. Varicella party ni dekat US lah, gengen anti-vaxxer ni. Kalau seorang ada family dia kena kena chicken pox, dia akan panggil varicella party. So dia panggil ramai-ramai, kumpul, semua anak-anak tu dia nak bagi varicella. Ni orang-orang gila lah dekat US. So, varicella number 8, <coughs> polio. So it has high rate of mortality and survivor has high rates of neurological sequelae. One of my lecturer, is a pediatrician in Kuantan, is a survivor of polio. So kalau di jalan tu kita nampak gate dia. Polio punya gate. Okay, alright. Number nine, second last question. Polio vaccine. Injectable polio, risk of developing polio-like syndromes. Developed by Dr. Sabin, developed by Dr. Jonas Salk, ada herd immunity punya issue. So, oral polio vaccine, oral polio vaccine has the risk because it's a live vaccine, there's a risk of developing polio-like symptom, but not injectable polio. So developed by Dr. Jonas Salk and Dr. Sabin ni dua different lah. Sabin and Salk ni dua different punya ni. Dr. Jonas Salk ni dia tak patent kan pun. So he can earn actually millions uh, of of dollars because of his because of his uh, development of polio vaccine tapi dia tak dapat satu sen pun. Dia tak minta satu sen pun sebab it is a huge problem. It's a huge pandemic masa masa tu. And then he, he design and basically uh, if only he were Muslim kan. So, okay, last question, last question about vaccine. Vaccine causes eczema. A child with atopy has higher risk to have vaccine allergy. Ada aborted fetal cell. It's a government conspiracy, eh? Macam Trump cakap pasal, pasal COVID, apa semua, everything is government conspiracy. Ada juga anjak gamma gospesi ni, saya saja ni. So basically, uh, vaccine doesn't cause eczema. Vaccine doesn't have a aborted fetal cell and a child with atopy has higher risk to have a vaccine allergy. Okay, that's it. So siapa top? GZ, siapa top sekali? <laughs> okay, all right. Page. Let's close this. Okay, where is my presentation? Okay, all right. Can you see my presentation? My slide? Can you see? Okay, all right. So, vaccination and its issue. I just want to show you.
before kita start tengok eh tengok ada berapa slide ni 172 slides hmm tempat kita sempat nak habis ni 172 slides versi okey so sebelum nak start lagi this are among the thing that we found in in facebook and this is the brave new world that you are going to face kan Uh, ni daripada poster nama Ganja Guru Pesakit Cilik uh, Nak petik nama sat lagi So uh, uh, Ni menggunakan ubat herba uh, Untuk treat jaundice Untuk treat uh, ni whooping cough uh, Whooping cough baby dah kurang tak teruk Seperti sebelum ni Baby baru 2 bulan Satu minggu treatment kat hospital Tak ada cerita whooping cough Kan tak ada selera makan apa semua Lepas tu apa dia buat Dia bagi ham oil Dia bagi ganja pada baby tu Baby pun sudah berselera semula So hi So dia bagi baby Ganja. Ini pula ni Betul ke cara nak turunkan demam kuning Kena minum air kasbut ha. kan? So ini semua Tapi serah pada ilahi Tapi beri kasbut pada Pada budak kecil-kecil So ni semua Ni semua kerja gila lah Ni semua kerja Kerja gila Kan Ini lagi nak John Dees turun Tepik panty liner So dia jual satu Satu jenis panty liner ni Tampal kat baby Kuturun John Dees dia Alhamdulillah dia kata ha. Ni semua Ni semua kerja-kerja gila lah So these are all Things yang you are going, going to face In Malaysia uh, Anti-vaccination Is a disease of uh, uh, Apa uh, What you say that uh, Privilege It's a problem of the privilege Anti-vaccination is a problem of the privilege uh, So Because in Malaysia we are becoming more privileged So kita masih Kita nampak lagi banyak So this one Imunisasi homeopati ha, So dia cucuk ni kan ha, Dia bagilah ni Dia bagi ni doktor homeopati ni bagi kan ha, Cucuk sama dia ikut schedule kita Masa bila entah homeopati Keluar vaksin-vaksin macam ni Even yang buat PhD in homeopati Tak ada buat vaksin macam ni Tapi just because To sell something To earn money dia buat macam ni So these are all dangerous things eh? We are seeing this Okay Just want to show you This is my own surat beranak, my own birth certificate. At the back there, belakang tu ada notis tanam caca. Uh, so, uh, I think those born in 1980 and 1981 were the last uh, batch of Malaysian that are injected with uh, smallpox vaccine, tanam caca. Tanam caca is smallpox kan? Uh, so, I'm, I'm among the last batch of uh, Malaysia that receive uh, that receive smallpox vaccine. Eh? There was a time dekat Malaysia, siapa yang tak cucuk tanam cacar ni, dia tak boleh pergi sekolah for example. Eh? Yang ni dia cakap ni kalau siapa yang tak cucuk, dia kena bayar denda RM25 so kena cucuk juga. So cucuk lah tanam cacar tu. Smallpox. So this is smallpox. Smallpox before the advent of vaccination. This is smallpox. It's very debilitating disease. It's a very bad disease. Very high mortality rate. It caused by variola virus 20 to 50% mortality. So it's very very high mortality rate. And survivors, they are scarred with residual facial marks. Some are left blind. And yeah? just because of this, this disease. Uh, these are the last cases of smallpox, 1975 and 1977. These are the last cases of smallpox. Sekarang smallpox dah tak ada dah. If people kata kan, uh, zaman dulu tak bagi vaksin sihat. These people, they don't know about smallpox kan. Macam mana smallpox is eradicated because of because of vaccination. Uh, last ada ada laboratory uh, quiet in 1978 lah. But basically, this is, this is the last one. So in 1979, WHO declared. Smallpox is eradicated. Tak ada langsung dah. And all countries uh, cease. They stop by 1980. Eh? WHO advised all countries to stop routine vaccination. I think in Malaysia, some in 1981 still dapat lagi lah uh, that, that, that vaccination. 1982 and above, tak dapat dah smallpox. Uh, these are videos. I don't think we have time to show video. You can google this name. Eh? Smallpox will kill smallpox patient. You can see the videos. Polio. So, Show you, okay. So this is polio. Eh? It's a very debilitating neurological disease. Eh? Uh, very debilitating disease. And the other issue is it affects the lung. The, it affects the lung. So the patient cannot breathe. So instead of kita ventilate patient, masukkan tube, bagi dia breathe, 
kita guna this iron lung eh. Yang ni gambar bawah ni is iron lung. So iron lung is dia bagi negative pressure. The negative pressure chest dia pun expand. Supaya dia boleh breathe. So this is this is iron lung eh. This is iron lung. So macam mana dia orang happy eh. Macam kita kat kita kat Malaysia kat uh, you tengok video kan uh, yang kena uh, kena COVID-19 bila dia sihat uh, asal ni ventilated semua bila sihat healthcare worker semua clap kan bagi dia support happy bila dia boleh keluar kan. Uh, macam macam zaman dulu orang polio orang yang kena polio betapa happy ni dia orang bila tengok dengan vaksin we can end the polio punya threat. So it is very easy eh? very easy to forget how serious polio is. So so many people stranded inside this iron lung. Eh? Iron lung ni dia duduk most of the day duduk dalam iron lung. Duduk baring dalam ni Mesin ni bagi negative pressure, pull up dia punya lung. Untuk dia breathe. Dia tak boleh breathe sendiri. Dia kena breathe with this contraption. So this is a huge problem. And so jalan pun macam ni eh. As I said, one of our lecturer before, uh, pediatrician. Uh, sekarang dia ada pediatric private punya klinik dekat Kuantan. Uh, was a polio survivor. Was a polio survivor. Tapi orang sekarang ni bila tak pernah nampak polio, tu yang dia orang jadi anti-vaxxer ni. I pun sama lah banyak banyak video ni I'm not going to show tak sempat Petasis Petasis Whooping cough eh It's another disease This one I want to show Alamak tak boleh lah pula ha, Tak boleh lah I'm very sorry lah Nanti you google lah eh Petasis So petasis ni it's a very Kalau kena petasis ni Petasis is a disease that we still see Every day uh, Not every day lah But at least few months We'll see one case of children with petasis So petasis ni suffer sangat nampak dia batuk tu macam tak boleh breathe. Dia lemas. Lemas dengan dengan batuk tu. Sampai jadi biru, sampai jadi apnik. So this is a huge, 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 huge problem. Google lah nanti. I don't know why cannot show. And then the other is diphtheria. Diphtheria I think last year. Last year in UAE we have one suspected diphtheria case. Luckily comes out as negative. Tapi diphtheria is another problem. I think in my whole life, there's only one case that I saw that I suspect to have diphtheria. So this is diphtheria. So, so history. Historically, in 1749, <coughs> Edward Jenner. Edward Jenner is the first that produces vaccine. Eh? So, but if we look at history, Ismanya, in the third century, In China, they develop already variolation. In China, in in the Ottoman Empire, they dah develop uh, variolation. So, apa dia buat? Dia ada satu disease nama cowpox. So, orang yang ada pengembala lembu, dia dapat cowpox. Cowpox ni, dia lebih kurang sama macam smallpox. Tapi, it is a much milder disease. Very low mortality rate. So, apa dia buat? Dia ambil dia ambil uh, blister yang small cowpox tu. Dia cucuk pada orang yang uh, orang yang lain. So orang yang yang lain tu tak dapat uh, chicken pox. Uh, 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 tak dapat small pox. So this is what they do. Uh, do general gen. Uh, ni Sarah Nelms is the one that first receive uh, small pox vaccine. Uh, actually in 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 okay. So if we look at history as well. Uh, microscope was actually uh, discovered by uh, Ibn al-Haytham in the year of 1965 and by the year of 1000 actually same with uh, Chinese punya discovery actually in, in in the Ottoman Empire they have already discovered the method method of method of variolation only dia ambil daripada blister dia ambil some of the air dalam blister tu dia cucuk pada pada orang yang lain so but the same Same disease, almost similar disease but different lah. So basically cowpox, they ambil blister tu, dia cucuk. So this is what they do, variolation. And then you know if you look at Arrozi, Arrozi has mentioned in his encyclopedia, he's mentioned about pediatric, uh, uh, pediatric medicine, he mentioned about immunology, he mentioned detail about smallpox, he mentioned about measles. So this is just at the year of 865. So our 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 predecessor in Islamic empire is actually they are the forefront. They are at the forefront of Uh, of the uh, uh, re uh, renaissance of the med uh, of medical renaissance actually cuma kita tak selalu cerita pasal kehebatan uh, Islam ini kan history of immunization <coughs> in 1796 Edward Jenner the first to introduce smallpox vaccine but I said again the his idea is actually from the variolation from the 
Chinese Empire and also the Ottoman Empire punya punya idea. And then rabies vaccine by Louis Pasteur, cholera, typhoid and then diphtheria in 1913, tuberculosis by Calmet, eh, BCG, eh, Basil Calmet Guarin. Eh. So Calmet ni yang first design, and then diphtheria toxoid, pertussis, tetanus, yellow fever, mab, mums, and then the two, first one by Dr. Salk, and uh, Jonas Salk, and then Dr. Sabine. Uh, 1954 and 1957 and then measles and uh, rubella. These are all people that have actually contributed to production. So WHO obviously recommends vaccination against all these all this, uh, diseases. Our Malaysian national immunization, we start with uh, in 1956 with DT, diphtheria and tetanus and then it can go up. Eh? Uh, and I think the last uh, adjustment was done in 2016, lah, the last change that, that we did. Uh, so, the basis behind national immunization program basically is to protect individual child from any of the vaccine preventable disease uh, and then reduce recurrence of outbreaks of the target disease by creating adequate herd immunity. So, vaccine, vaccine can only work if we have adequate number of population uh, receive the vaccination. Contohnya, eh, measles, measles, they perlukan around 80% of the population to be vaccinated. Uh, kalau less than that, they can have outbreaks. Macam tu. But, and they depend on the different R0 of the of the disease lah. Baru kita tahu apa-apa persen yang kena dapat vaccination. Okay, we need to have high vaccine coverage, eh? high vaccine acceptance. Baru boleh efektif. Good herd immunity, maknanya ramai orang kena, ramai yang dapat dan sebagainya. And then, we need to have low vaccine refusal. So, Malaysia... Vaccine refusal is actually increasing in trend. So, the latest MOH immunization schedule, yang lama dia macam ni, yang barunya dia tambah ada MMR ada dua dos in bulan 9, 9 months old and also 12 months old ada dua MMR. So, ni yang the difference with the new immunization schedule in Malaysia. <coughs> so, again, this is the new immunization schedule from 2016. So, at birth dapat BCG and first dose of hepatitis B. Uh, satu bulan dapat second dose of hepatitis B and then uh, 2, 3, 5 dia dapat deep, uh, detect hip polu, uh, the IPV, pentaxim eh, dia dapat uh, semua-semua ni and then bulan 6 dia dapat hepatitis B and then Sabah dapat measles and then MMR at uh, 9 months and also 12 months and then booster for everything by 18 months. Uh, so and then 7 years dapat lagi booster and then for female dapat HPV, HPV vaccine. Uh, so, this is the Malaysian uh, National Immunization Program. Ada banyak vaksin yang tak ada dalam ni. Actually, if you if you remember, eh, last year, the government announced uh, pneumococcal vaccine, eh, pneumococcal vaccine to be introduced for children born in the year 2020. Uh, tapi, because of uh, tourism, because of uh, because of COVID-19, so, uh, benda tu macam tak jadi and then because of tukar kerajaan, tebuk atap ke apa ke, and then, uh, uh, I, I I think in the pediatric community as well, kita kita hope lah PCV, pneumococcal vaccine ni akan still proceed tapi the prognosis doesn't look really good. Dan ada lagi vaccination lain eh. Uh, contohnya rotavirus vaccine. Uh, different country have different uh, immunization program. For example lah, eh, dekat UK, UK rotavirus vaccine masuk dalam dia punya program. Uh, pneumococcal masuk dalam dia punya program. Meningococcal pun masuk dalam dia punya program. Ha, tapi kita meninggu kokal hanya untuk yang pergi haji saja, Pergi haji, pergi umrah. Ha, nak masuk Saudi memang kena ada cucuk meninggu kokal. Ha, tapi kita, uh, kita tak ada. Kita hanya yang pergi haji saja. Ha, tapi kalau in certain country macam UK, dia ada meninggu kokal vaksin dalam dia punya schedule. Dia bagi sekali dengan yang dengan yang detect hepatitis uh, hemophilic influenza tak B dengan polio ni. Dia bagi sekali meninggu kokal vaksin. And also, uh, uh, pneumococcal vaksin as well. Even Brunei, uh, even Saudi pun ada uh, rotavirus vaksin dan sebagainya. Okay, again, this is the schedule. You boleh baca yang ni. We don't have time. As I said, we have uh, 20 minutes more. So, basically, with vaccination, we see polio is actually reducing in trend. So, polio is almost, almost dah polio nak jadi eradicated in the world lah. Eh. Tapi still, I think until now, we still see pockets of some polio disease in the world. Hari tu in Malaysia also, we have some suspicion of polio. Eh? So, 
sadly polio is not eradicated yet. Diphtheria also is not eradicated yet. We still rarely see, I think last year alone in Malaysia, we see several cases of diphtheria in Malaysia. Measles drop a lot. So by two, actually measles, one of the problem with measles is uh, under diagnosis or over diagnosis because doctor sekarang ni jarang dah tengok measles. So measles dah drop tapi still dia ada pockets. Uh, if you look at the news, I think three years ago ada Disneyland outbreak of measles. So ada patient yang dapat measles tapi parent dia anti-vaxxer pergi juga Disneyland and then dekat Disneyland tu more than 20 children uh, infected with measles. Disneyland US lah. Okay, immunization coverage in Malaysia. So, uh, this is the trend. We are going to go a bit faster. The trend is actually dia naik and then dia start turun balik. And eh. overall sebenarnya kita punya vaccine trend is actually not that bad lah. Eh. Not that bad. So, uh, around the same kita punya vaccine acceptance in Malaysia. <laughs> Vaccination status among children 12 to 23 months in Malaysia. This is from NHS, NHMS 2016. Uh, so, berapa banyak dapat ni yang ni yang private punya. Okay, I'm not going to go with this. So, dia ada 4.5% yang incomplete vaccination, 0.1% unvaccinated. And the reason for incomplete vaccination in Malaysia, sometimes no time, parent busy, child is unwell, so dia delay, delay, delay. Financial or geographical barrier, tak ada duit, tak ada apa, tak ada apa, susah nak transport dan sebagainya. If vaccine refusal accounts for 11%. 11% vaccine refusal, no vaccine stock forgotten, not due yet allergy and, and others. Not due yet ni maknanya sometimes dia ada delay satu vaccine dia so bila dia buat this assessment tu, dia not due yet lah. Uh, reasons for receiving uh, private facilities, short waiting time, free only weekend, parents free only weekend, parent doctor blah 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 blah. Uh, vaccine refusal is actually increasing in trend in Malaysia. In 2017, they drop a bit and I think later on it starts to increase back. Uh, hopefully, lah, I hope, I hope with COVID-19, COVID-19 is a very good indicator to the world actually. This is the condition of the world when there is no vaccine. This is it. In, 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 in US, more than 150,000 died already. Uh, millions, tens of millions affected, infected with COVID-19. Uh, people semua takut nak pergi masjid tutup. Uh, pandemic, eh, pandemic, this pandemic, macam masjid tutup semua. This is not new. If you pernah, pernah dengar uh, ulama nama Ibn Hajar al-Asqalah ni. So, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalah ni uh, is, a, is, a, is a big ulama of uh, Syafi'i. So, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalah ni wrote a book. Nama buku tu is uh, uh, Bazlul Ma'un Fi Fadli Ta'un Bazlul Ma'un Fi Fadli Ta'un So he's trying to say the benefits of Ta'un Ta'un doesn't mean cholera Ta'un means pandemic Ta'un means wabak Ta'un means wabak Ta'un means So if you look at hadith Hadith yang kata siapa yang mati dengan Ta'un ni Dia mati syahid dan sebagainya kan So Ta'un doesn't mean cholera Ta'un means uh, out pandemic uh, So certain hadith uh, Ta'un means uh, uh, bubonic plague For example ada hadith Nabi kata uh, Ta'un will not reach uh, Will not reach Makkah and Madinah But we know Certain disease Certain pandemic actually reach uh, uh, Makkah and Madinah But not bubonic plague So bubonic plague doesn't reach Makkah and Madinah So Ta'un So uh, Ibn Hajar Naskola ni wrote a huge encyclopedia about the benefit of Ta'un, benefit of pandemic. Not in terms of health, but in terms of uh, 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 in terms of uh, uh, redem uh, what it? Uh, emancipation, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, us knowing God and things. So uh, in terms of shahid and and and, and all this. So it's an encyclopedia. So, tutup masjid ni is not new. Eh? So, I really hope that with people nampak betapa teruknya satu pandemik dalam keadaan kita tidak ada vaksin ni, people akan see yang anti-vaccination ni is mengarut. But we'll see lah. We'll see how things goes. Causes of vaccine refusal in Malaysia. Tuan, mana negeri yang champion? Eh? Champion sekali adalah eh, Terengganu dengan Kelantan. Oh, Champion Pahang nombor tiga 
Ha, Pahang nombor tiga. Tapi Pahang tahun 2017 ni improve lah Pahang. Ha, tapi still Terengganu Kelantan is still champion. Oh Perak. Perak dah jadi champion sekarang. Hmm. Clusters of uh, anti-vaccination punya group lah. So apa apa reason orang Malaysia refuse vaccine? So homeopathy, rawatan tradisional, isu halal haram, ragu dengan kandungan, takut ada babi ke apa ke, pengaruh internet dan sebagainya. Pengaruh keluarga, mak ayah cakap jangan vaksin. Takut dengan reaksi, bla 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 Dan ada yang takut kena, syukur kena bayar lah. Okay, reasons for, ni sama jugalah. Reasons for vaccine hesitancy in Malaysia punya konteks. Past experience eh. Contohnya ada, ada. Obviously lah kalau ada isu, kita pun be careful lah. And then perceive religion punya isu, tak kata non-halal. Ini yang saya nak discuss sebenarnya. And then traditional medicine, uh, pseudoscience anti vaccine theories bla 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 so ni semua adalah uh, reason for vaccine hesitancy vaccine uh, measles i showed measles down and then naik balik uh, okay we are not going to go we are not going to go 2018 ada outbreak uh, i think 3 year 3 years ago we have so many measles cases sampai uh, PICU so many ventilated patient with measles uh, measles can cause pneumonitis eh? so measles mortality this is in malaysia Uh, so, measles can cause mortality. Measles is not a simple disease. Measles can cause mortality. Especially in neonates and also those those who are immunocompromised. Rubella as well. Rubella. I've seen congenital rubella. Budak tu buta sebab congenital rubella. So, rubella is a problem as well. Rubella is... Dulu-dulu, dulu-dulu kita cucuk rubella ni pada siapa? Only girls yang umur 15 years old. Umur uh, from 3 kita cucuk rubella. Tapi problem dia bila kita cucuk female saja, male can still dapat rubella. Bila male dapat rubella, they can still get infected. Kita tak dapat herd immunity. Kita tak dapat adequate vaccine coverage. Sebab tu sekarang kita cucuk semua orang. Semua orang dapat rubella vaccine. So petasis as well is increasing in trend. It's not controlled yet well. Siapa yang selalu dapat, selalu dapatnya adalah children yang not vaccinated yet. Tapi most, uh, most of the time dia dapat daripada relatif yang not vaccinated. Number of diphtheria cases as well in Malaysia eh, kita uh, ada C uh, 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 apa nama diphtheria in Malaysia as well even last year I I, I told you in UAE Kuantan we suspect one patient with with uh, with uh, with diphtheria uh, and then neonatal tetanus we still see neonatal tetanus this is very bad neonatal tetanus is among the scariest disease that you can see eh. dia kejang tak boleh gerak oh it's very bad And then hepatitis B. Okay, basis. This I think should have been covered before. Masa you punya third year punya presentation. I'm not going to go in detail. So, a Jervan, adverse reaction antitoxin. So, immunization ada active and passive. You have immunoglobulin as well. Specific and also human normal immunoglobulin. And then toxoid punya type. So, vaccine, vaccination. I think you should know this. Principle of immunization. Basically, inducing immunity. Eh. So, basically, it's a process of inducing immunity and protect from infectious disease and it is very specific uh, to the to the antigen it's not something random you don't give immunization to simple diseases demam batuk sesema tak dapat vaccination you only give vaccine to disease that are highly infective you only have vaccine for disease that are difficult to treat you only have a uh, vaccine for disease that are have high mortality so not all disease is worth to get vaccine So vaccination, immunization is only for problematic cases. Cases that have high mortality and morbidity. Cases who are very difficult to treat. Cases who are very highly infectious. Principles of immunization. You have antigen and antibody. So antigen is the is the is the is the is the is the, is the substance that produce the immune immune response lah. So antibody is what we produce. Uh, and then active and passive. So active is produced by the person's own immune system and passive is when we give the antibody, uh, transfer of antibody. I'll give some example later on. Active, passive, blah, blah, blah. Uh, sources of positive, passive immunity, almost all blood or blood products. Eh? Bila kita bagi blood product, memang boleh dapat. And a homologous pool, human antibody, jangan kita bagi immunoglobulin kan. Contohnya kalau patient immunosuppress ataupun new newborn yang dapat uh, varicella. So, kita kena bagi 
varicella zoster immunoglobulin sepatutnya. So it is a specific antibody towards towards uh, varicella zoster, chickenpox. Hmm. Okay, and then contohnya examples of uh, antibody yang kita bagi eh. So untuk prevent uh, RSV, kita boleh bagi palivizumab lah. So it is a monoclonal uh, uh, monoclonal uh, uh, antibody lah basically. Contains only the RSV antibody. So kita bagi for those uh, babies, those children who are uh, at high risk to get complication with RSV infection. And kita bagi masa time winter lah. Time winter maknanya December, uh, uh, November until November until February macam tu. <coughs> Classification, it can be viral, bacterial, live attenuated. These are example of live attenuated vaccine, inactivated vaccine. Uh, and then I'm not going to go into that. I think you should know you can read inactivated vaccine. It can be virus, it can be bacteria. Then they will have protein base, other polysaccharide base. Eh? Protein base subunit, other toxoid. Uh, they can be pure or conjugated uh, uh, polysaccharide vaccine. <coughs> Inactivated vaccine cannot be replicated, blah, blah, blah. Generally require three to five doses. Not going to go into that. Example of live and inactivated vaccine. Uh, toxoid and subunits. Eh? Subunit macam typhoid punya ni. Uh, and then polysaccharide. And then the new conjugate polysaccharide vaccine. Eh? Macam pneumococcal vaccine. Eh? Uh, adult kita bagi polysaccharide pneumococcal vaccine. Tapi in children kita bagi. PCV ya, eh, pneumococcal conjugated uh, polysaccharide vaccine. Uh, pure polysaccharide vaccine, we're not going to go into detail of that. This is the new, this is the seven valent ni lama lah. Sekarang ni kalau you tengok uh, pneumococcal vaccine, kita ada yang 13 valent eh. Prevena, Prevena 13. Prevena 13 dia ada 13 valent pneumococcal vaccine. Uh, kalau dekat UIA kita tak ada Prevena, kita ada Synflorix. So Synflorix is a 9 valent pneumococcal vaccine. 9 valent maknanya dia cover to seven, macam ni 7 valent, dia cover to 7 different strains of Streptococcus pneumonia. So dia cover 7 different strain. Not all the 7 strain ada kat Malaysia pun. Dan yang common kat Malaysia probably 5 of the 7. So macam tu. <coughs> Basically cost dia lah mahal. Kalau yang uh, uh, Synflorix yang 9 valent tu the cost, cost, cost price is 230 I think. Kalau you ambil uh, 13 valent pneumococcal vaccine, the cost price, the, the price is 350 plus. PCV7 would be cost effective because it will prevent in, uh, admission and infection. Uh, so actually, many countries in this world has already uh, put uh, pneumococcal vaccination as part of their national immunization program. So Malaysia, we have already approved in our, our parliament last year. But again, as I said, I hope that it will proceed lah. I don't know lah. Nampak uh, government now is not really focused. So the need for vaccine is determined by the mobility and mortality from the natural infection. And then when I go into that, rubella, blah, 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 hepatitis B, immunization, herd immunity. So when most people in the community are immune to particular infection, so uh, natural transmission of the infection is effectively inhibited because most people are immune already to that disease. So measles kena 95% eh? but not tetanus, tetanus kena banyak lagi. <coughs> Myth and controversy. <coughs> okay, what are the myths? Some people say I prefer to let my kids build up their immune system rather than get vaccine. The stronger, uh, the uh, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger kan? Orang kata kan? So I've seen this. These are Dulu saya selalu masuk dalam grup apa masyarakat kena tahu ni dengan anti vaksin punya punya pot ni. Penat dah dia orang ni. Dia kata kita nak anak kita strong apa semua kan. So strong dia bagi dia dah, anak dia dapat infection. Sebab tu dekat US kan dia ada uh, varicella party tu. Seorang so, kena chicken pox dia panggil community dia untuk dia ramai dia spread chicken pox among dia punya community dia. Dia panggil chicken pox as I said is not a simple disease. Ada boleh dapat uh, pneumonitis. Ada boleh dapat encephalitis ada boleh cause mortality. So it's a, it's a huge problem lah. So this is this is gila punya kerja lah kan. Tak pasal-pasal budak ni susah sebab sebab infection. Sedangkan it is a it is a preventable lah. Natural immunity is better than immunity from from vaccination. This is not true as well. Yes. If you get chicken pox, you will be immune from chicken pox. If you get measles, you will be immune from measles. 
If you get mumps, you will be immune from mumps later on. Tetapi, before you get that natural immunity, with diphtheria, there is death, is 5 to 20% risk of death. Hemophilus influenza type B, 2 to 5% risk of death. Mumps, are all these possible complications. Polio, uh, this is currently lah, 2 to 5% risk of death. Uh, whooping cough, death. So, semua-semua ni, the risk is much higher as compared to the uh, immunity from uh, uh, from the risk of imu- uh, uh, risk of immunization itself. So, natural immunity is not better than immunity from vaccination. Yes, you can develop uh, 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 permanent immunity with natural immunity, but the thing is, for you to be exposed to this disease is problem. Why you need to expose your child, your child to all this risk? Kan? <clears throat> Long-term sequelae of natural infection. So, if you get uh, subacute sclerosing panencephalitis, so there's a lot. This is the risk of late complication of measles. So measles can cause subacute sclerosing panencephalitis. We have one patient with subacute sclerosing panencephalitis uh, early this year. Died, died because of this disease. Post polio syndrome, shingles, late complication of natural chicken pox, less common. So every all these things they are problematic they have long term sequelae so the best is still to vaccinate and again it is easy to forget the seriousness of many diseases polio is a very scary disease but now we are not afraid why because we don't see polio anymore <clears throat> so this is the this is the initial orang yang mula kan ini yang kalau ada hadis tu kan ada hadis nabi kata man sanna sunnatan hasanatan fa'alaihi ajruha wa ajru man amila biha siapa yang mulakan satu sunnah yang baik orang ikut dia dapat dia dapat ajar wa man sanna sunnatan sayyatan fa'alaihi wizruha wa wizru man amila siapa yang mulakan satu sunnah yang buruk orang ikut dia akan dapat dosa dia dan dosa orang yang ikut dia so this is the person this doctor dia produce dekat Lancet Andrew Wakefield so this is the person and dia bagi tahu dia pervasive development disorder this is basically autism lah so dia yang claim dia kata autism is uh, is caused by MMR vaccination. Uh, so, lepas tu, bila bila uh, masa tu memang jadi kecoh, semua orang, oh, semua orang takut. Tapi lepas tu, kita dapat tahu, actually ada banyak isu with Dr. Andrew Wakefield. Dr. Andrew Wakefield ni is a millionaire. Uh, sebab dia dapat duit macam-macam lah. Hmm. So let's see what 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 happened. Eh? So Lancet lepas tu dia dia tarik balik, dia tarik balik, dia withdraw, dia retract balik dia the article. Sebab apa? Sebab actually kita dapat tahu sebenarnya satu <coughs> Dr. Andrew masa tu uh, MMR vaccine ni dia ada several company, several uh, 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 farmasi punya company yang produce MMR vaccine. So masa tu US US dia uh, ambil satu company untuk jadi dia punya yang 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 dia, dia buy uh, US punya uh, healthcare buy daripada satu company. So this opposite company ni bayar Dr Andrew Wakefield untuk buat satu paper. This paper. So this paper yang dia publish ni is actually paid by the opposing MMR producer company untuk uh, smear company yang produce tu. Bukan setakat itu Dia produce dia, this paper, dia kata dia interview berapa banyak patient. And just by interview, not by proper assessment. And actually, bila dia check balik dalam record, they are not actually even contacted pun. These are all imaginary patient. Patient-patient yang dia kata tu, there's, there, 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 there's no patient. Tak ada pun patient tu. This is just a created punya, punya paper. Tapi, dia is the start of anti-vaccination punya movement. So, measles elimination declared masa 2000, tapi sepatu tu dia uh, naik balik. Eh. <coughs> okay, alright. <coughs> so, issue dia, dia claim kata, dia claim kata mercury timorosal tu is the cause for, is the cause for uh, autism. So, kalau kita tengok actually dalam measles, tak ada pun mercury tu, tak ada pun timorosal tu. So, timorosal ni is Apa je yang ada? Fluzone. Eh? This is, uh, uh, itu pun dia ada 0.01% timorosal content. So mercury content is very, very minimal. 
So it it is not an issue. So autism is not caused by it's not caused by vaccination. Mercury exposure, mercury content is breast milk is very high. Eh, is is very high. Nah, perlu dua breast milk ni. Soy formula, exposure to aluminium. Soy formula has higher content of aluminium. Eh, kalau you tengok dekat group anti vaccine, dia bagi point macam ni lah. Point uh, aluminium, point mercury, apa semua. Then dia kata, uh, apa nama, uh, natural, natural. Well, natural does not mean good. Berapa banyak pokok yang natural yang can kill you. Kan, berapa banyak herbs yang actually can kill you. Natural does not mean good. Ha, natural does not necessarily mean good. Hmm. Ha, nak kata too many vaccine, so it's rubbish lah. We don't give children that many vaccine pun. Antigen overload. Ha. So, uh, theoretically, eh, kita boleh kita boleh tolerate much, 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 much more. Ha. So, by the time ni, the, the number of vaccination that we give is actually way below what uh, the body can actually tolerate. Are vaccine safe? Are vaccine safe? Dia kata dengan vaccination ada cost mortality, blah, blah, blah. Tapi dengan mandi saja, by bathing, 350. This is in, this is in UK, drown per year. Having breakfast, the 200 child uh, choke and die per year. Playing in the rain. So, semua ni ada ada risk. Ha, sebab tu kita, kita benefit, kita kena uh, uh, stratify lah between ben benefit and risk. Uh, so, untuk untuk keluarkan satu vaksin, dia ada banyak proses dia. Uh, except for sekarang COVID-19 ni, I think dia dia terpaksa uh, fast track and some of the some of the phase lah. But I don't know. I, I have very low hope that COVID-19 punya vaccine will be successful lah. The threat. What are the threats? So, ada banyak juga ni. So, efforts to achieve good immunization coverage will increasingly be undermined by anti-vaccine activists. Uh, dia banyak guna internet lah, Dr. Google kan. So, this is where scientists do their research to synthesize vaccine. And this is where the pseudoscience get their research. So, dia kata uh, vaksin ni kerja Yahudi, Israel. So, orang Islam dia dapat banyak vaksin. Israel tak dapat banyak vaksin. If you see actually, in 2012, kan, Israel punya NIP is much more than even in Malaysia. Banyak lagi daripada Malaysia. Dia ada nomokokal vaksin lagi. Rotavirus pun ada tiga dos rotavirus vaksin. Ha, hepatitis A pun dapat semua. Kita tak ada lagi hepatitis A. So, in terms of vaksin, dia orang dapat lebih daripada what, what we get. So, it's not their agenda. So, ni lagi satu isu. <coughs> this is another issue. I pernah pernah ber, ber argue lah dengan dengan geng anti vaksin ni. Patu I I I think it's no use uh, arguing with them. So dia kata uh, example of vaccine insert ni weakened form of ni chicken pox punya ni kan ada sucrose, ada hydrolyzed gelatin. So dia kata gelatin ni ada albabi kan. Lepas tu ada monosodium glutamate ni apa semua MSG bla bla bla. Lepas tu ada banyak-banyak ni chemical 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 ni bla bla bla. Patu ada Residual components of MRC5 cell. Uh, ni yang dia kata uh, from uh, aborted fetal cell dia cakap kan. Lepas tu ada antibiotic, ada neomycin, ada fetal bovine serum. Uh, ada pula macam-macam semua kan. So what is MRC5? So MRC5 is a lung fibroblast taken from a 14 week old fetus. Dia memang start daripada uh, fetus yang aborted dulu kan, due to serious maternal indication. Memang bukannya dia abort kan. Uh, tapi baby tu, uh, apa, fetus tu was aborted. Lepas tu, apa dia buat is dia replicate cell tu. Uh, kenapa kena guna fetal cell? Sebab fetal cell can replicate much more. Sebab dia nak culture kan dia punya virus, kan? Dia nak culture kan virus, dia perlu ada cell untuk virus tu replicate. Kan? Dia tak boleh guna cell biasa. Kalau ambil cell from us, from adult, kita punya cell doesn't replicate that much. Tapi bila dia guna fetal punya cell, fetal cell is very... Uh, potent, dia boleh replicate banyak. Dia high replication. So, senang untuk dia culture. So, MRC5 ni is not a component of the vaccine. It is a medium. It is a culture medium. It is a culture medium. Macam pinggan je. Kan? Kita kata halal, kita tak makan pinggan. Pinggan tu pinggan lah. Haram makan pinggan tu. Kan? So, pinggan is not food. Kan? Kita makan apa yang dalam pinggan tu. So, sama juga dengan vaksin. 
So we don't take this MRC5. MRC5 is just the culture medium. Faham? Okay. Some important Islamic concepts. Ini yang sebenarnya yang main point. Kita kumpat dan ni. Salah ni. <laughs> so. First. There are several concepts yang kita boleh, kita boleh, kita boleh pakai. The first is the. Qa'idatul uh, darar. Uh, concept of darar or harm. Kan? Uh, Allah. Uh, apa. Uh, uh, you. Allah wants for mankind ease and not difficulty. Allah hendak mudah bagi kita bukan kesu, kesukaran. Do not throw yourself into disaster and difficulty. So this is the concept. Qa'idatul darar. And maqasid syari'iyah. Jalbul masalih wa darul mafasid. The, the maqasid syari'iyah. The purpose of the syari'iyah. Is to promote goodness and to prevent badness and difficulties. Al-jalbul masalih wa dar'ul mafasid. So this is the concept. So everything, the hukum will be according to this this concept. This makasid, this purpose of the of the sharia. Then there are several other kawa'id fiqhiyah. Uh, fiqh concepts and application that we can use. The first is la darar wa la dirar. Do not do harm and do not cause harm. La darar wa la dirar. And the second, the, the second is ad-daruratu to be hul mahzurah. Something that is darurah, it allows the thing that is uh, that is initially unlawful. When there is harm, it permits the unlawful. Ad-darurah to be hul mahzurah. So something that is initially haram, but when there is a darurah, this thing becomes permissible. And then uh, harm, harm. And the thing that it permits are limited to its limits. Ad-daruratu tuqaddar bi qadariha. So, something that is haram. Okay, bila ada, bila ada ham, bila ada darurah. Bila, uh, something yang haram, bila ada darurah, benda ni jadi halal. Tetapi, it also has its limits. Dia ada dia punya qadar dia. You cannot go overboard. You cannot go overboard. Orang kata kan, kalau contoh ustaz-ustaz selalu bagi kan, kalau kita sesat dalam 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 pandang pasir, for example, tak ada makanan, tak ada air apa semua, kita lapar. Uh, untuk menjaga nyawa kita, ada babi seko. Tak tahu macam mana, tiba-tiba ada babi seko. Kita bolehlah makan babi tu. So, kalau nak menjaga nyawa. Tetapi, tak bolehlah makan seko. Kan, you makan cukup-cukup untuk menjaga nyawa. That example. Contohnya macam kita tangan berbalut. Kan? Sorry. Eh, give me one second. Okay. Uh, Ad-darurah tuqaddar bi qadariha. Apa lagi? Kaedah. Concepts of origin. So, uh, uh, concept of, of origin. Al-asl. So, al-aslu fil asya al-ibaha. The original ruling. The original hukum. For everything is permissible. Semua benda dibenarkan. Al-ibaha. Mubah. So, hukum asal. Semua benda adalah al-aslu fil asya al-ibaha. Allah dibenarkan. Al-aslu fil ibadah al-mamnu. Original ruling of anything related to prayer and submission is not permitted. Is is haram. Hukum asal semua benda berkaitan dengan ibadah adalah al mamnu. It is uh, not permissible. Al aslu fil manafi al ibaha. Hukum asal everything that gives benefit it is permissible. Hukum asal original ruling ni. Ini kita kena clear. And then al umur bi makasihha. Everything is related to its initial intention. Uh, so Uh, maknanya hukum satu benda tu, it depends on the initial intention of that benda juga. Sebab tu contohnya isu macam uh, uh, cuka eh. Cuka, cuka yang daripada arak. So kalau asalnya daripada arak memang untuk arak, untuk minum alkohol tu, dia nak permisible lah. Saya rasa yang nak answer this. Hello? Masalah? Ada, ada, ada. ada. Boleh tak? Ada, ada, ada. Ada, ada, ada. ada. Muhammad, Muhammad. Ambil barang. Okay, alright. Uh, so, al-umur bi makasidihan. Okay, ada few concept yang, this is the main thing yang I know you all understand lah. Eh. Yang first is al-istihalah. So, al-istihalah means transformation. So, al-istihalah means something yang 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 asalnya haram. Bila dia converts, when it is being transformed into something that is very different, it is it becomes permissible. For example, eh, when satu benda yang 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 najis, satu benda yang najis, when it transform, it becomes something that is tahir. It becomes something that is clean. 
For example eh, macam arak. Cuka eh, cuka yang kita makan tu. So cuka sebelum dia jadi cuka dia mesti jadi arak. So glukos transform jadi alkohol. Daripada alkohol dia jadi proses uh, dia jadi uh, 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 dia, jadi, dia ada proses chemical proses dia and then baru dia jadi uh, cuka. So this is the process is al istihalah. So ulama has 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 concluded that al istihalah is acceptable. So benda yang haram bila dia telah melalui proses yang bertukar dia where include physical appearance property such as name, odor, taste, color and everything it becomes something that is pure, uh, pure something that is tahir, something yang clean. Uh, Cuma nya kita kena understand istihalah ni dia ada beberapa isu. Contohnya Uh, Syafi'i and, and some of Hambali Dia kata Proses of istihalah Must be a natural process Maknanya daripada wine Daripada alkohol Aduh. Daripada alkohol Dia nak jadi Dia nak jadi Cuka Dia kena Proses yang natural Dia tak boleh ada Chemical punya enzyme Punya proses nah, Tapi other mazhab says It's okay Itu satu Second concept So maknanya Contoh uh, Second concept ni al istihlak al istih al istihlak is concept of hyper dilution uh, maknanya contohnya kan contohnya macam air dua kullah air dua kullah najis masuk air na, air itu tidak menjadi najis kalau air itu banyak kan dalam air laut kalau oh, ada orang pergi kencing dalam laut tu kan it doesn't make that uh, air laut tu as uh, najis it's the air laut is still clean because the Amount is more. So, concept of hyper dilution. So, this is al al istihlak. Okay. So, this is the issue. Okay. Uh, certain uh, fatwa. Ada orang cakap? Assalamualaikum. Ah, sorry. Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, Dr. Anissa uh, is, we have class with Dr. Anissa after this. So, uh, she's currently waiting for you to end the commentary. Hai, macam mana you boleh buat lecture continuous macam ni ni? This is not right. <laughs> uh, I think it's okay. I think Dr. Said kalau you nak habiskan pun okay kot. Then I'll reschedule another time. Should be no problem. So nak sambung ke apa ni? Ah, you, uh, banyak lagi kan? So I think you finish yours je lah. And then I'll do my slot uh, uh, another time. Okay, 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 okay. Because I think this is a concept that I want the students to understand lah. Ah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, but I thought it this is going to be at home kan. So I just masuk je lah. Uh, so, okay, okay. Okay, alright, alright. Okay, few fatwas eh. Few fatwas. So, first, European Fatwa Council and Islamic Organization of Medical Sciences rule has of posan, gel posan gelatin as permissible as it has undergone istihalah because the process eh, uh, bila dah bertukar jadi gelatin tu ciri-ciri uh, kebabian tu dah tak ada dah. So this is the understanding by the European Fatwa Council and the Islamic Organization of Medical Sciences. But uh, it is not it is not uh, 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 agreed upon by by all. So for example eh, majma' fiqh from Saudi they allow istihalah but it has reserved for gelatin. So dia kata gelatin yang posan gelatin yang guna dalam uh, pil dan sebagainya tu is not is not It's not uh, a complete istihalah process. So there are some, there are some, uh, some reserve lah. Eh? Okay, about gelatin as I mentioned here. So European Fatwa Council, European Fatwa Council, the head is Yusuf Korodawi lah. Uh, these are the members of European Fatwa Council lah. Eh? Korodawi, lepas tu siapa lagi? Uh, nama gila-gila. Rashid Gonushi, Rashid Gonushi sekarang dah jam politik lah. Ada Syekh Abdullah bin Bayah, uh, ni ulama besar sekarang ni. Uh, Uh, Abdullah bin Salim, uh, Yus, uh, Abdullah Al Al Judai, Majid Najjar, ini semua lah lah besar ni. Abdul Sattar Abu Goda, uh, siapa lagi? Ali Karabagi, Tahir Mahdi, Mahbub Al Rahman, Taki Uthmani, ni semua ulama-ulama yang besar semua. So, another issue. This is almost similar dengan Uh, this is you, uh, oral polio vaccine. Eh? So oral polio vaccine, the problem with oral polio vaccine is dia ada uh, porcin trypsin. You know what is porcin trypsin? Porcin is babi lah, pork. Trypsin is is the enzyme that is used to cut protein. So long protein, dia cut guna 
trypsin. Knife is not, you don't eat knife. You eat the food that is being cut by the knife. Makan pisau ni haram. So pisau is not something to be eat. But you eat what is being cut. So sama juga dengan dengan this issue. So porcine trypsin, that trypsin is just used to cut. It is not used, it is not part of the content of the of the final product. Okay. Tapi council ni, European Fatwa Council, dia bagi macam ni. Out of IT, dia kata, isu fatwa, uh, dia kata ada sempat dia kata uh, not permissible. Tapi European Council, European Council, uh, Fatwa Council, dia argue macam ni. Dia kata, what God forbid is partaking of pork. Maknanya Allah mengharamkan kita memakan babi. And trypsin has nothing to do with pork. Trypsin ni, walaupun dia dibuat daripada posang punya komponen, tapi it has nothing to do with consumption of pork. Orang tak enjoy pun. Orang tak makan trypsin. Orang tak ambil trypsin. Trypsin is part of the process sahaja. Okay. That's the first thing. Secondly, European Fatulang kata, even if we admit that trypsin is forbidden, the amount used in preparing the vaccine is negligible. So, guna tu sikit sahaja. So, it is al-istihlak. Kan? The concept of al-istihlak that we discussed before. Okay. Nombor tiga. So, impurities no longer affected because it is so minute. Hyper dilution. The third argument is, supposing kalau lah kita still, kita tak consider istihlak. Kita kita tahu dia kata, it is thoroughly filtered, leave no traces whatsoever in the final vaccine. So, dia kata, dia dah menjadi proses al-istihalah. Bukan setakat itu, dia kata, and kalau kita tiga-tiga ni, kita tak agree juga, dia kata, in case the three argument forwarded are still insufficient lah bagi certain orang, kan? Kita ingat, the haram is made permissible in cases of necessity. Ad-darurah to be hul bahzurah. Kan? With darurah, when, when there is necessity, something that is haram is become permissible. So, ad-darurah to be hul bahzurah. So this is what European Fatwa Council, Yusuf Kordawi and the team try to emphasize. So dia kata, uh, kita jangan be too strict in matters that are open to consider opinion and bring considerable benefit to Muslim children as long as these matters involve no conflict with any definite uh, uh, nafs. Lah. So this is the uh, uh, Islamic Association uh, of Sweden, macam tu. Okay, alright. Some issue. <coughs> Fatwa and on Enoch Sapa. This is Malaysian Fatwa uh, uh, Keputusan uh, Muzakarah Majlis Fatwa Kebangsaan Malaysia. Fatwa on Enoch Saparin and Fraksiparin. Siapa ada idea pasal ni? Enoch Saparin dengan Fraksiparin ni apa? Low molecular weight heparin kan? Untuk heart, untuk heart failure. Heart, uh, untuk heart attack. Ischemic heart disease, kita cucuk Klexin, eh? Klexin, enoxaparin Klexin, so Klexin ni Dia ada porcine punya content Dia ada porcine punya content, so fatwa kata Fatwa membenarkan penggunaan Enoxaparin dengan syarat Ada, ada dorurat Ada, ada dorurat Okay, isunya adalah uh, Isunya adalah Kita dah ada fraksiparin Yang, 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 yang fraksiparin ni Tak ada, tak ada porcine Kan? Tapi kita mesti guna enok saparin yang ada posan. Sebab apa? Sebab sometimes adalah uh, doktor yang beli tu tak biasa dengan yang non-posan punya base. So, the idea is mana kita nak kena create more Muslim doktor yang aware, yang cakna pasal syariah compliant medication. Faham? Tapi fatwa kata, bila ada dorurah, it is permissible. Okay. Next. Fatwa on meningokokal vaccine, Mansivax versus Monument pun lebih kurang sama juga lah. Basically, posan punya content. And the last one yang I want to discuss is about Rotatec, Rotaviral Vaccine. So, Muzakarah Majlis Fatwa Kebangsaan issued, issued the fatwa saying that use of Rotatec untuk Rotaviral and also Biotrex. Biotrex ni Antrex vaccine. In Malaysia, is considered as not permissible. Is considered as haram. Sebab apa? Sebab in production of these two vaccine, Rotatec and Biotrex, ada penggunaan porcine trypsin. Sama macam oral polio vaccine. Atas alasan apa? Muzakarah Majlis Fatwa Kebangsaan kata alasan dia adalah 
Dua-dua penyakit ini, anthrax dan rotavirus di Malaysia tidak menyebabkan penyakit yang serius di Malaysia. Which is, I think this is not true. I actually have met uh, pengurusi Majlis Fatwa Kebangsaan, uh, Tan Sri Syukur. I told him I don't agree with this fatwa lah. Anthrax, yes, in Malaysia, anthrax is not a problem. So I, I don't mind anthrax. But rotavirus is among the leading cause of death in children still. Uh, rotavi rota rotaviral diarrhea is still among the cause of death in children in Malaysia. It still cause a uh, lot of uh, admission, mortality and morbidity in Malaysian children. So rotavirus is actually a significant disease in, in Malaysia. And fatwa, bila dia guna uh, rotatec, porcine trypsin, kita tengok balik uh, uh, diskusi daripada oral polio vaccine. So isu al-istihlak, isu al-istihalah dan isu al-darurah tubihul mahzurah. Ha, tapi kita kena ingat al-darurah tukadar bi kodarihan. Darurah ni dia ada dia punya limit dia. Maknanya you tak boleh lah semua-semua orang nak bagi rotavirus vaksin. Kena ada indication dia. Kena ada clinical indication dia. You do not give too much. Tak boleh lah minum secawan terus kan. So kita ada kodar dia. That is the uh, kodar. Al-darurah tukadar bi kodarihan. Vaksin adalah harus. This is now uh, the uh, menteri agama lah kan. So dia pun mention about Vaksin is is harus dan digalakkan. Eh. Uh, Ustaz Tarmizi from Uniza as well mentioning about about vaksin harus. So uh, okay ni dia pada dulu lagi lah. I don't, I don't think we we Malaysia is brave enough to say that vaksin is compulsory. Eh. Uh, Terengganu Mufti pun mention about penggunaan vaksin, dia pun support Terengganu Mufti It's very progressive lah I think, it's very good Even uh, Mufti Terengganu kata It is wajib uh, to be vaccinated uh, Sebab dia prevent certain diseases uh, So bukan setakat halal, bukan setakat permissible He says it is wajib to be to be vaccinated This is Terengganu punya Mufti Uh, and then, berdosa jika tolak vaksin punca anak kena penyakit. Ha? This is keputusan majlis fatwa kebangsaan. Ha? So, yeah. lepas tu, Mufti Kelantan pun mention the same. Penggunaan vaksin ada bahan terlarang, walaupun ada bahan terlarang, walaupun ada bahan haram, dia kata ke penggunaan dia adalah harus sebab ad-darurah tubihul mahzurah. Al-wiqayah khairum minal ilaj. Wiqayah is prevention. Wiqayah is better than Uh, 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 minat ilaj, dia punya treatment eh. Prevention is better than cure Al-Wikoyah, Khairu, minat ilaj uh, So, this is Dekan Blah-blah, re-emergence of disease I'm not going to go through this Okay, alright So, the issue is, when there are more anti-vaxxer We will see Re-emergence of Diseases So, this is the problem In US, we've seen In so many countries, we have seen as well Okay, alright. I'm not going to go through all. This is in. Let's just see this last few slides. So, ni pernah tak ni? Lotus birth. Lotus birth ni dia lahirkan anak, dia tak potong dia punya kot dia, dia tinggalkan anak dengan all the placenta and everything. So, baby sekarang boleh dapat risk of infection lah sebab ni. It's a source of infection. Blood, ada glukos, ada apa semua boleh dapat infection. And it goes direct to the baby. We have seen babies die because of this uh, lotus birth. Semua, semua ni benda yang berbahaya. Uh, new challenges, uh, dengue vaccine, sampai sekarang pun tak settle lagi. Uh, HFMD vaccine, HIV vaccine. And the last one is COVID-19 punya vaccine lah. I don't know lah. I, 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 I'm not convinced yang kita akan beraya sukses dengan COVID-19 vaccine. Because I don't think there is enough data saying that there is... Uh, persistent uh, immuno, uh, 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 immunological reaction to to vaccine ni. Maksudnya immune response to persistent stay in the body. So far I don't see enough data saying that it works lah. But we'll see, we'll see. Sekarang tengah trial lagi. In 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 several countries, no jab, no play. No jab, no pay. So tak dapat macam-macam lah. Payment, child care payment semua tak dapat dan sebagainya. Kalau tak, vaccine ni. Okay, alright. Any question? Penat? Tidur belakang dah semua? Ada yang masih berjaga? So clear tak? So ready dah nak balas dengan gang anti-vaksin? Uh, 
Ha, last time dekat UAE kita pernah buat satu program pasal vaksin ni. I was one of the presenter lah. I was one of the panelists. Kan? Tapi instead of commenting on 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 the thing that I've been talking, anti-vaxxer punya group hentam dalam Facebook, dia kata, dia kata apa? Doktor ni gagap lah, bla bla bla. So, hmm. Good lah. So, any question? Clear? I just hope you understand this. Basically, vaccine process dia, I hope you already understand vaccine process. I don't think we need to go in great detail. But at least you understand that we have a religious argument in it. Apa hujah-hujah, hujah-hujah syari yang kita boleh guna. Okay, alright. Clear? Uh, Dr. Syed, uh, uh. saya cuma nak tanya uh. je yang uh, pasal tentang flexion tu. Dia kira, kiranya konsep istihalah jugalah Dr. Syed. Uh, tak, argument pasal argument, uh, so istihalah pun still boleh terpakai sebab the, the volume is is small tapi I think part of the uh, unlike posan trypsin dalam 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 kleksin ni dia memang part of the component kalau oral polio rotavirus dia just trypsin just guna untuk cut tapi untuk making of that inoxaparin tu dia memang guna posan punya component posan punya protein So yang tu ada problem sikit sebab the 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 volume is a bit bigger sebab itu kalau tengok fatwa tu dia menggunakan uh, hujah ad-darurah to be mahzurah rather than guna hujah al-istihalah. Faham? Tu hujah yang fatwa tu guna dalam muzakarah majlis fatwa kebangsaan adalah dia menggunakan hujah a uh, darurah. Al-jalbul masalih wa dar'ul mafasid. Sebab saya ingat kan kalau yang macam gelatin tu dia pun ada juga tapi tadi tu macam istilah. So so so, so gelatin gelatin tu lah gelatin dia ada dua dia ada dua isu. Satu majority uh, ulama contemporary agree that gelatin is uh, istihalah. Dia dia benarkan dari sudut istihalah. Tapi what I can say is majmak fatwa uh, uh, Saudi kata Uh, gelatin is not complete istihalah. It's not complete transformation. So, uh, Saudi, dia still tak, tak accept gelatin as istihalah. And I think many kat Malaysia pun sama juga. Kita tak 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 actually accept. I think, tapi Muzakarah Madinah Fatwa Kemasaan tak ada mention lah pasal, pasal gelatin ni. I, I didn't find anything. Sekarang, portal e-fatwa dah tak boleh access sangat. Ada ada problem, political punya problem. Tapi, uh, anyway, I think in Malaysia, we don't actually accept uh, gelatin to be istihalah lagi lah. Uh, despite Korodowi, despite European Fatwa Council, despite IOMS kata accepted. Despite certain other country pun fatwa allow uh, gelatin. Okay, any other question? Uh, I have a question. Like, yep. uh, for example, in life implemented vaccine in oral polio, uh, is it uh, as treated as life as well in and what And is it significant to carry uh, infection? Yes, herd immunity. Sebab itu, sebab itu bila ada oral polio vaccine, itu satu lagi purpose dia. It, is, it, is, it can still be excreted. Dia ada, dia panggil vaccine shedding lagi kan. So, semua-semua benda ni, sebab tu, that is the purpose lah. Kita bagi oral polio ni, walaupun masa tu dah ada injectable polio, we still give oral polio sebab kita nak herd immunity. Orang lain yang handle that patient boleh dapat lagi. Sebab we are still shedding. Okay, so it is still it is still as life attenuated. They still boleh pass through. Hmm. Okay, clear. Any other question? Cukup lah, jangan setengah lah ni. <laughs> okay lah eh. Anything you can ask me later. But uh, my hope is that you have some idea about vaccine. And I hope tak ada UAE punya medical student yang terpengaruh dengan anti-vaccine punya propaganda. I know there are people in our university that are anti-vaccine. I know there are nurses yang anti-vaccine pun. I just hope tak ada lah medical student yang anti-vaccine ni. Uh, sebenarnya I already give up lah nak discuss dengan anti-vaccine people ni. Bukan bukan kita give up apa. I just think they have a fixed false belief. Orang yang ada fixed false belief ni, you cakap lah apa pun, you bagi lah apa evidence pun, it doesn't affect them. So, we focus on those that we can still... Those that need, that, those that want help, kita bagi help. Those yang tak nak ni, fine. Kita doa terbaik untuk dia. 
That's it. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Doctor. 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 Kalau ada tanya saya ada tanya. Thank you Doktor. Esok esok CMC. Tak ada sambung ke nak? Tak ada tak ada. <laughs>